Welcome to Crime Tales TV. Tonight, we're delving into a chilling case that goes from love to terror. Picture this, December 1st, 2010, and Staff Sergeant Nathan Payette is in a rush. Late for duty at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, his usual alarm fails him for the first time ever. He wakes up at 11 p.m., kisses his family goodbye, and heads to the garage. Just as he's about to start his car, shots ring out. Nathan's family races to him, finding him bleeding and staggering. His wife, Michelle, tries to reach him in time, but it's too late. Around 11.30 p.m., tragedy struck as the family patriarch collapsed on the ground. A frantic call to 911 echoed Mrs. Payette's distress. My husband has been shot. He's bleeding. Help him, please. Through her tears, Mrs. Payette pleaded for assistance, and the dispatcher promptly guided her through initial first aid steps. Despite Michelle's valiant efforts with artificial respiration, they proved futile. Upon the arrival of rescuers, he was swiftly transported to the nearest hospital, where medical professionals exhausted every resource to save him. Tragically, the wound to his neck proved fatal. This moment marked a stark division in Mrs. Pate's life, a demarcation between before and after the loss of her heroic husband, slain on the doorstep of their Las Vegas home. The subsequent outcry from the public, coupled with the support of friends, family, and concerned citizens, demanded answers from law enforcement regarding the motivations behind the criminal act. Eventually, the perpetrator was apprehended and brought to justice, though questions lingered. Nathan Joseph Villa Gomez Payet was born on February 12, 1982, in the village of Tamuning, Guam. Despite its status as a U.S. territory, Guam maintains a distinct identity. Known for its historical significance and natural beauty, Guam attracts numerous tourists. Nathan was blessed with a large, affectionate family, including brothers Matthew, Anthony, and Eric, as well as sister Carmela. Renowned for his kindness and diligence, Nathan navigated through adolescence with a remarkable lack of trouble, excelling both at home and in school. He possessed a magnetic personality, drawing others to him effortlessly. Nathan's affinity for the ocean blossomed into a passion for surfing, occupying much of his leisure time. Attending South High School in Santa Rita, Nathan's path intersected with that of his future wife, Michelle Paye. Their initial attraction burgeoned into a deep, unwavering bond, weathering life's storms together. Michelle, having experienced the loss of her mother at a young age, found solace and support in Nathan's unwavering presence. Their love blossomed, leading to Nathan's proposal in 2000. With their families unable to finance a wedding, Nathan and Michelle embarked on their journey together, moving in with each other's blessings. Nathan secured employment as a hotel receptionist, providing for their needs. However, their aspirations for independence and a home of their own persisted. Their son Dion's arrival marked a new chapter, prompting Nathan's decision to enlist in the Air Force. Stationed at Elmendorf Air Base in Anchorage, Alaska, Nathan pursued his military career while Michelle cared for their growing family. Their dream of home ownership materialized and the birth of their daughter, Niara, enriched their lives further. Nathan's military success fueled his determination to provide for his family. Six years after their engagement, Nathan and Michelle celebrated their union with a joyous wedding ceremony, a testament to their enduring love and resilience in the face of adversity. Nathan's mother beamed with pride as her youngest son ventured forth to achieve great things, as Eric fondly recalled. In 2006, Nathan's journey led him to the Davis Monthan military base in Arizona, where he assumed the role of weapons loading team leader for the A-10 Thunderbolt attack aircraft in one of the Essex squadrons. Among his co-workers, Nathan was known as a true patriot, deeply dedicated to his work. By 2007, Nathan's career path brought him and his family to Nellis Air Base near Las Vegas, Nevada. There, he served as an assistant junior officer overseeing the supply section for combat aircraft maintenance 
embracing opportunities for professional growth. The Payette family flourished as they welcomed two more sons, David and Dron, expanding their bonds amidst Nathan's career milestones. Michelle found herself enchanted by the allure of Las Vegas, and Nathan, eager to fulfill her dreams, carefully selected their future family home, a spacious, luminous abode ideal for their growing family. Positioned just a short commute from the military base, it seemed a perfect fit. Nathan's prudent savings paved the way for their new home, yet as expenses mounted and financial strains surfaced, the initial thrill waned, casting a shadow over their joy. The weight of financial pressure strained Nathan and Michelle's relationship, a plight not unfamiliar to many couples. By mid-2009, amidst the backdrop of the United States conflict with Iraq, Nathan recognized the need for change. Volunteering for service, he embarked on a transformative journey that saw the family's fortunes improve over the subsequent months. Meanwhile, Michelle grappled with her fears and uncertainties, adjusting to the reality of managing their household and raising their four children in Nathan's absence. Seeking stability and autonomy, she embarked on her own professional path, delving into the world of corporate credit card telemarketing. As her career progressed, Michelle's pursuit of personal growth led her to enroll in the School of Aesthetics, seeking fulfillment beyond the confines of domestic life. However, the strains of separation and the demands of military service took their toll on Nathan and Michelle's relationship. Long periods apart left Michelle yearning for connection, leading her into a brief affair with a colleague, seeking solace and affection amidst the challenges of their circumstances. Rudolph Rodriguez, a charismatic 31-year-old known for his charm and local reputation as a womanizer, had a checkered past marred by deceit and criminal activity, including a prison stint in 2007 for attempted theft. Despite his flaws, Michelle couldn't resist the allure of Rudy as they mockingly dubbed Michael behind his back. Upon Nathan's return home in late 2009, it seemed that the family had reconciled and grown stronger through their trials. However, beneath the surface, Michelle harbored a secret longing for her husband and a fear of losing him. Opting to remain with his family for the time being, Nathan was taken aback by the transformation in Michelle's demeanor and appearance. The prolonged absence of a father figure took its toll on the children, impacting their education and emotional well-being. Unbeknownst to Nathan, Michelle's drastic changes hinted at deeper secrets, veiled by her outward virtue and devotion. Seeking financial stability, Nathan sought additional income opportunities in Las Vegas, taking on night shifts, private tutoring, and developing a simplified baseball curriculum for children. Meanwhile, Michelle's pretense of reconciliation quickly dissolved as financial strains exacerbated marital tensions. During Thanksgiving 2010, the arrival of brother Eric and his wife Veronica exposed the cracks in Nathan and Michelle's relationship, laying bare the strained dynamics within the family. Despite Michelle's efforts to feign reconciliation, the reality of their deteriorating marriage became undeniable. A fateful conversation between Mrs. Payette and Mr. Rodriguez on December 1, 2010, hinted at sinister intentions brewing beneath the surface. Michelle's admission of marital dissatisfaction and financial concerns planted the seeds for a nefarious plot, fueled by greed and desperation. Michelle's sinister thoughts found resonance in Michael's own scheming mind, leading to a dark alliance forged with the help of Corey Alexis Hawkins, a seasoned criminal with a history of fraud and theft convictions. As their clandestine plan took shape, Jessica Austin and others were drawn into their web of deceit, paving the way for a tragic catastrophe that would shake their community to its core. Shannon, a friend of Jessica's acquaintance and Corey's girlfriend, navigated life by participating in adult films, their choices driven by financial necessity rather than intelligence. In a twist of fate, Shannon found herself entangled in a scheme that promised her a share of Corey and Jessica's ill-gotten gains, 
lured by the prospect of substantial royalties. The criminals concocted a sinister plan to execute Nathan in his Chevy Tahoe, intending to abandon the vehicle along with his lifeless body in an apartment building parking lot. Jessica procured the necessary tools for the crime, including men's gloves, a car cover, and a scent to obscure any traces. Shannon's role was pivotal. She was tasked with verifying Michael's alibi on the day of the murder, aiming to deflect suspicion from their nefarious activities. On December 1, 2010, as Michelle returned home feeling unwell, she encountered her husband, Nathan, sleeping on the sofa. Seeking solace, she proposed they retire upstairs together, unaware that it would be their final night together before tragedy struck. As Nathan rushed downstairs, running late for work, Michelle engaged in coded correspondence with Michael to avoid arousing suspicion. Meanwhile, Michael and his accomplice sat in a black Cadillac SRX, parked strategically near the victim's home, donning latex gloves to prevent leaving any incriminating evidence. Aware of the potential threat posed by Nathan's military training, Michael opted to ambush him from behind. Drawing his pistol, Michael fired five shots into Nathan's back before fleeing the scene in his car. After the brutal act, the perpetrators swiftly retreated to a predetermined location, disposing of evidence and burning their clothes in a fireplace to cover their tracks. Seeking to establish an alibi, Michael and Shannon checked into a hotel while Jessica meticulously cleaned their shared apartment. The arrival of emergency services police officers at the scene left them stunned by the heinous crime that had unfolded in the typically peaceful neighborhood where the Payette family resided. Detective Todd Williams, tasked with investigating the shooting, found the garage door unlocked with a distinct iron smell permeating the air. Blood was splattered on the walls and car interior with traces evident on the floor. Despite the untouched valuables, indicating a motive beyond robbery, the incident was initially classified as a robbery murder. After examining the scene, Detective Lori Anderson decided to speak with the victim's wife, Michelle, to gather more information. Michelle explained the events leading up to the incident, mentioning the family's financial struggles. This detail raised suspicions among the police, suggesting the possibility that Nathan may have been hiding something from his wife, such as a gambling addiction, debts, or an extramarital affair. Despite the initial uncertainties, all evidence pointed to Nathan being deliberately targeted. The investigation progressed as detectives scrutinized the victim's cell phone, which contained only pictures of his wife and children, reinforcing the perception of Nathan as a decent man. The next phase of the investigation involved canvassing the neighborhood for potential witnesses Typically, there's someone who may have seen or heard something relevant. In Nathan's case, neighbors reported seeing a car parked near the Pyatt residence, driven by a man in a brown sweatshirt. After the shots were fired, the vehicle quickly fled the scene, providing detectives with a valuable lead. Nathan's family was devastated by the tragic news, rushing from Guam to seek answers. Michelle, overwhelmed with grief, embraced her mother-in-law upon their arrival, but then unexpectedly lost consciousness. This reaction raised suspicions among investigators, prompting further inquiries into Michelle's behavior. Concerned about discrepancies in Michelle's account, investigators revisited their conversation with her. During questioning, Michelle unexpectedly mentioned her colleague, Michael Rodriguez, who owned a similar car to the one seen near the crime scene. This revelation added another layer of complexity to the investigation, prompting detectives to delve deeper into Michelle's connections and potential involvement in the case. Despite initially providing ambiguous information, Michelle's cooperation helped shed light on the unfolding events. Police later concluded that Michelle either inadvertently revealed the truth or exposed flaws in the perpetrator's plan. Detectives delved into Michael's background uncovering a criminal record that heightened suspicions. During questioning, Michael claimed to have been shopping at a supermarket around 9 p.m. on the night of Nathan's murder. He recounted a chance encounter with a woman named Shannon, 
leading to an extended conversation and a subsequent rendezvous at a hotel around 11 p.m. to verify his alibi. Officers contacted Shannon, who corroborated their encounter. However, detectives remained skeptical, prompting them to scrutinize Michelle's phone records. Specialists recovered a year's worth of communications between Michelle and Michael, characterized by cryptic discussions, particularly concerning a contract with a certain Van Deek. This conversation appeared more like coded instructions than legitimate business dealings, suggesting their involvement in planning the crime. Although investigators suspected both individuals' involvement, concrete evidence remained elusive, leading them to release Michael pending further clarification of the case. Subsequently, Michelle was summoned for further questioning. Visibly flustered and evasive, Michelle eventually confessed to her affair with Michael. She revealed that she and her lover had contemplated killing Nathan several months prior to his death, intending to cash in on insurance payments. Michelle attempted to justify her actions, claiming she had experienced a change of heart during the planning stages and had even attempted to intervene by disabling Nathan's alarm clock. Despite her remorse, her admission of complicity in the scheme further implicated her in Nathan's tragic demise. Michelle's outward demeanor portrayed a lack of remorse, with investigators skeptical of her sincerity. Her correspondence told a different story, revealing her true sentiments. Notably, she sent Michael a cheerful smiley face upon learning of her husband's death, casting doubt on her professed grief. Shannon's confession at the police station shed further light on the case, although her involvement appeared embellished. She claimed Michael coerced her into providing an alibi, implicating Jessica in a plan to retaliate against a drug dealer. Shannon insisted she only sought justice but feared for her safety, prompting her eventual confession. CCTV footage from the hotel contradicted Michael's alibi, confirming that he and Shannon arrived later than he claimed. Shannon's testimony led detectives to Corey and Jessica, with Jessica eventually admitting her role in the sinister plot. Meanwhile, on December 7, 2010, Nathan's family and friends gathered at the chapel at the Nellis base to honor his memory. Michelle, however, chose to skip the ceremony, displaying a lack of interest or emotional connection. Comrades fondly remembered Nathan's resilience and dedication to his family and country during the service. Eric, his brother, praised Nathan's exemplary character and unwavering devotion to his loved ones. On December 9th, Nathan's remains were transported to Guam, where a requiem mass was held at St. Francis Church in Tamuning on December 15th, accompanied by military honors befitting his service as a sergeant. Nathan's funeral at the PY City Cemetery in Guam was a grand affair, marked by a procession of 36 motorcycles escorting the casket draped in the U.S. flag. As six officers solemnly carried the casket to its final resting place, 21 shots reverberated through the air, honoring Nathan's service with a hero's farewell. Meanwhile, on December 8, 2010, Michael Rodriguez, Corey Hawkins, and Jessica Austin were apprehended without bail, followed by Michelle Paya the next day. Concerns for Michelle's mental well-being prompted authorities to place her under surveillance to prevent any self-harm. The legal proceedings commenced on January 4, 2011, at the Clark County District Court, where the four accomplices faced charges of conspiracy to commit murder and robbery with a firearm, as well as murder with a firearm. Michael and Corey faced additional charges of firearm possession. Over the course of three years, the trials unfolded amidst denials of involvement from some defendants. Bolstered by robust defense teams, multiple motions were filed in an attempt to exclude certain evidence from the case. However, the court consistently rejected these motions, prolonging the trial process. Finally, on September 21, 2015, the trial for Nathan Pyatt's murder commenced, with Michael Rudolph Rodriguez as the first to stand trial. In a bid to avoid the death penalty, Michael pleaded guilty on September 29, 2015, receiving a life sentence in prison without the possibility of parole. Michael's appeal of his sentence was rejected, and upon hearing the verdict, he displayed no visible emotion, 
suggesting a lack of remorse for his actions. It appeared that he harbored no regret for the heinous crime he had committed. Michelle's trial took place in a Las Vegas court a month later. Despite her claims of a change of heart regarding her husband's murder, evidence suggested otherwise. When given the opportunity to address the court, Michelle turned to Nathan's grieving parents with tears in her eyes, expressing remorse and apologizing for her actions. However, skepticism prevailed among the prosecution and the judge, who believed that Michelle's remorse was insincere. Despite her emotional display in court, the evidence painted a picture of her deeper involvement in the crime than she admitted. The judge ultimately sided with the prosecution, concluding that Michelle was more deeply involved in the conspiracy than she had acknowledged during the trial. The tragedy of a mother of four children turning to such cold-blooded actions left many baffled and unable to comprehend the depths of her involvement in the crime. Michelle ultimately pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder and first-degree murder with a firearm, a decision that spared her from facing the death penalty. The Pyatt family also appealed to the court to show leniency towards their former relative, urging against the imposition of capital punishment. During the sentencing hearing, the judge denounced Michelle's actions as incomprehensible and unfathomable. In October 2015, Corey Alexis Hawkins, the third defendant, followed suit and agreed to a plea bargain to avoid the death penalty. Corey received a life sentence in prison, with the judge denying any possibility of parole, citing his significant involvement in planning the crime. Similarly, Jessica Austin reached a plea deal with prosecutors, leading to charges of conspiracy to commit murder. In March 2016, Michelle faced her final sentencing, once again citing her unstable emotional state as a contributing factor to the crime. She reiterated her remorse and appealed for forgiveness from Nathan's family. Moved by Michelle's apparent remorse and genuine torment, Carmelita Pyatt, Nathan's mother, exhibited a deeply religious forgiveness in the courtroom, expressing her willingness to forgive Michelle. However, she highlighted that the most significant punishment Michelle had already faced was the estrangement from her children, who harbored fear and distrust towards her due to her actions against their father. Carmelita expressed the family's belief in forgiveness rather than seeking revenge, emphasizing that they would not adhere to an eye-for-an-eye -eye principle. Eric Payet acknowledged that Michelle was deeply affected by his mother's words noting that their family would move forward without her and their children would grow up aware of their mother's actions. Veronica, Eric's wife, also addressed Michelle, expressing her hatred towards her and accusing her of dishonoring the family name for her own selfish desires. Veronica highlighted how Michelle's pursuit of greed and love for a man she barely knew had torn their family apart. She painted a poignant picture of Michelle's betrayal emphasizing how she had become the murderer of the man she once deeply loved and had built a life with. Veronica questioned whether Michelle had ever considered the consequences of her actions, highlighting the stark contrast between Michelle's pursuit of happiness and Nathan's selfless dedication to his family. She emphasized how Nathan had sacrificed his health and well-being to fulfill Michelle's dreams, yet never received the recognition he deserved. Veronica expressed concern for the lasting trauma inflicted upon the Pyatt children, who would struggle to form strong familial bonds and socialize due to the painful experiences of their parents. Despite the tragedy, Veronica found solace in the fact that the perpetrators would face justice and remain incarcerated where they belonged. Don't miss out on the latest episodes of Crime Tales TV. Hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay updated. Join our community for more gripping tales of true crime. Subscribe to Crime Tales TV now, and remember to stay safe out there.